to the Salaf, they used to um, prepare six months for Ramadan, and then the six months following it, they would beg Allah that He accepted it. So it was the Salaf looked at it as this golden opportunity once a year uh, to get close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And if you look at the verses, Ayman uh, do that. فَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفْرًا فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرَ وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدْيَةٌ طَعْمِ مَسَاكِينَ أو فِدْيَةٌ طَعْمُ مِسْكِينَ Different riwayah. فِدْيَةٌ طَعْمُ مِسْكِينَ That they used to be permitted to pay if they couldn't do it, if it was difficult or something. That came later, right? So then Allah says, وَانْتَصُمُ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ But to fast is better. So you can break your fast on a journey uh, of 32 miles according to some Malikis, 48 according to most of the scholars, 72 according to extreme views. So you take your pick. Um, but you can break the fast, right, when you travel or when you're sick. So people with diabetes, some people's haram. This is called khitab al wada in usul. Uh, you, have, uh, you, you have what's called khitab al taklif and khitab al wada. Khitab al taklif is the the divine discourse of responsibility. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kutiba alaykum al siyam. Kutiba means it's far. Right? If something's maktub, right? Inna salata kana ta'ala al mu'minina. Kitaban mawquta. Yani inna salata kana ta'ala al mu'minin. So ala is one of the ways of wujub in usul. Walillahi ala al nas. Hijjul bayt. Another way of, of, uh, of obligation is kutiba. You know? Uh, so Allah says kutiba, it means that it's prescribed, that like you, you have to do it, right? So the, the fasting, but that's taklif. Now the wada, you have to fulfill the asbab, the shurut, and, and there can't be any mawani that prevents you. So you have reasons why it's fart, bulugh is one of them, you reach maturity. Before maturity it's not. Malik considered children fasting was actually uh, ta'deeb. He considered it to be a child abuse. Imam Malik. The other ulama were easier on. There's some hadith in al-Bukhari that they used to get the kids to fast. But Imam Malik based his uh, madhab not on hadith, but on the amal of the people of Medina. And in Medina, they did not have children fast. He considered it child abuse. With what we know today about glucose and the needs for children with developing brains, children should not fast, especially when you've got to fast this long. But Imam Malik considered it child abuse. So that's khitab al wada where you have to look at the, the asbab. So one of the sabab of wujub, one of the, the reasons for its obligation is uh, the hulul al shahr when, when the month comes in. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْهُ Whoever sees the month or witnesses or hears uh, by certain knowledge, others saw it, then you have to fast it. So that's one of the asbab. So outside of Ramadan, you can fast tatawwan. وَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَوَخَيْرٌ لَهُ If you fast uh, out of voluntary, uh, it's better for you. It's a good thing to do. It's khayr. So that's another. And then mawani. So if you have diabetes and your doctor says you can't fast, that's fart not to fast. That's the sharia is an intelligent system. It's not a, 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 this is not a stupid person's religion. In fact, the proof for me that it's not a stupid person's religion is sujood al sahu <laughs> Especially if you're a Maliki. Because sujood al sahu is really hard. And you have to think about, okay, what did I do? And, and then you don't make sahu for sahu. Because you can forget in the sahu. And when you fast, you know, sometimes, right? It's like the Mauritanian, um, the Dhuhr came and the food was there. They said, should we pray? Uh, or should we, should we eat? He said, stop it, Allah, let's pray first Dhuhr. So he prayed, but he recited out loud. Because right? he's thinking about the food. Right? So if you, if you, uh, you know, those are, those are the, what are called khitab al wada And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan, الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان that he revealed the Quran in this month so the Quran came down منزلا you know in the Quran it has إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر there's إنزال and تنزيل إنزال comes down one time تنزيل يقطعه it comes down this is Arabic these are the subtleties of Arabic so the تنزيل it's bit by bit so the Quran came down one time and then it came down bit by bit it's like you get a it's like you get a, a, on the computer, you get the, the download, 
but then the printer, it comes one at a time, right? It doesn't come all at once. So the Quran came down one time, and then it got printed out over the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The, the Quran is a Furqan, in other words, a criterion to distinguish right from wrong, right? Uh, so, so this is uh, this is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that the month is a month of Huda and Furqan that it came down in that month, and then when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that uh, if you, if you look at the the what comes right after that. So he mentions it a second time. You know that this is He wants ease for you and not hardship. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants ease for you and not hardship. Why? So that you can complete your ibadah. وَتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ شُكُرُ So this is a month of gratitude. The Prophet was most generous in Ramadan because he was most grateful in Ramadan. When, when, when you have something you want to give out of gratitude for what you've been given. So it's an immense time of gratitude, just feeling gratitude for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for all that he does. Then, وَإِذَا سَأَرْكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ and when your servants ask, if they ask about me, say I'm close. I will answer the one who calls when he calls. That has shuru. There's conditions for the answering. Because they used to come to some of the self, they say, we call. And the Prophet said, you know, the, the man raises his hands. And he, malbasu haram, sharbuhu haram, ma'kaluhu haram, malbasu haram. Amna yustajab lahu. That somebody will raise their hands in dua, his, his food is haram, his drink is haram, his clothes are haram. How is he going to get answered? So there's conditions for, for being answered, but the, the, the general rule is, if you call on Allah, He will answer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer you. Right? If they ask about me, say, I'm near. From the carotid artery, consciousness itself. He's closer than consciousness itself. So that, and then, right? فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ let them respond to my call. Because he's calling out. We're calling on him. But don't forget, his call preceded our call. So if you want to be answered when you call, you should first answer. If, 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 if I call you up and you don't answer the phone, right? And then you call me up, I might think, he didn't answer my call when I called him. Why should he answer his call when he called me? Maybe that's not the right way to think, but there's people that will do that, right? <laughs> right? Or, you know, oh, uh, hold on. You know, I, one of the things about these phones that I, really interest me is you always know where you stand with people. Because when they have call waiting, if they get a call, they'll say, oh, hold on just one second, and then they'll go. If the person that is calling is more important to you, they get back to you, they say, I'll get back to you later, and then they go back to the other person, right? So you know where you stand with somebody on call waiting. <laughs> if you're more important, they'll say, sorry, I'll get back to you, and they go back to you. But if they're more important, you're gone. History. So if you don't answer Allah's call, that's an Arabic proverb. The, the, the reward is in accordance with the deed itself. So if you want to answer, فَلْيَسْتِجِيبُ لِي Right? وَلْيُؤْمِنُ بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُمْ رُشْدْ That's how you get guidance. Rushd is by believing in Allah and answering His call. Right? It's, it's amazing. These, these, these verses are very uh, uh, interesting verses. فَلْيَسْتِجِيبُ لِي And then, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ لَيْلَةَ الصِّيَّامِ أَرَّهْدُ إِلَى النِّسَاء You know, that during that time, you can be intimate, right? Why? Because عَلِمُ اللَّهُ أَنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ تَخْتَانُونَ أَنفُسْكُمْ The Sahaba, they were so worried about the sanctity of Ramadan, they wouldn't go to their wives during Ramadan. Allah said, no, you know, that, that's a time you can go to your spouses once the night uh, فَالْآنَ بَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَابْتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ 
Lekom. So at this time now, Mubashar is permitted. That's a, what they call euphemism in rhetoric. Uh, it's a kinaya, you know, Mubashar for, for, uh, uh, for intimacy. Mubashar. That's another kinaya. So anyway, uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that. And, and, and so if you, uh, during that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted that. And then, uh, but he warns, right? Don't let what Firatu Bashuruhuna want to maaki funa fir massage. Don't but when you're in uh, when you're in the the time of uh of uh, uh, where where you, you, you t take a, a a type of khalwa, which you can do anywhere technically. The Shafi'is permit it if you enter into the masjid you can make that intention. Manakis you have to stay at least a night. But the Shafi'i is some some Shafi'is, they do it every time they go into the masjid, no al i'tikaf, because they want the reward for it. This is one of the rahmah of the ummah, is it has these different opinions. But that's a Shafi'i opinion. Maliki, no, you have to stay in the time. But during that time that you're in i'tikaf, it's a type of khalwa, where you, you don't engage. And the Prophet said, Kenny, you should do izarahu fi al awakhir. It said he used to tighten his uh, uh, lungi, you know, his loincloth. Because that's Ramadan. It's madrasa to taqwa. Right? It's madrasa of taqwa. It's to learn taqwa. And what is taqwa? Wa hasuru taqwa ishtinabun wa fi zahirun wa batinun didatuna. Taqwa is avoiding the haram and doing the halal inwardly and outwardly. Not just outwardly. That's one type of people. They're called munafiqun. Outwardly they do those things, but inwardly they're filled with the diseases of the heart. And people forget that the diseases of the heart, that you're, you're actually mukallaf. For you have to work on your disease of the heart. You know, people think they're not uh, obliged to work on their hearts. You are, you're obliged to work on your hearts. Because On that day, nobody will enter paradise unless you come with a sound heart. And what is a sound heart? It's not having animosity or hatred towards uh, other people. That's a sound heart. And the Prophet ﷺ said about a man he passed by, he said, there's a man of paradise. <coughs> that man was not known for doing much. He was just not an impressive person in Medina. And one of the Sahaba, he said, what's his secret? <coughs> see, I never see him doing all the extra stuff that a lot of people do. So he went, he spent, he hung out with him just to find out. Was, and then he couldn't see that he did anything that anybody else was doing. Finally, he asked him, you know, what's your practice? He said, my practice is I never go to sleep with anything in my heart towards anybody else. And that's what made him a person of paradise. Just not having that ghil in the heart. People, now we're in an age of ghil, hasad, ghiba, namima, zur, kidib. All these diseases, they're just rampant in our culture. And, and Ramadan's a time to really start reflecting. Um, and, and obviously returning to the Quran as well. So may Allah bless your Ramadan. May Allah bless your Arabic intensive, inshallah. It's, it's, it's Arabic is what the Arabs call sahl mumtana. You know, it's the easy impossible. There's an aspect of it that's really easy, and, and if you break the code, it becomes much easier than most other languages. There's another aspect of it that you'll never master it. It's just so rare to find people that have actually mastered the Arabic language. We don't have people that master English anymore. The nuances of English are just lost on people because language is extraordinarily complicated and the tools needed to master a language take many, many years. Imam Shafi'i studied Arabic for 17 years before he did ishtihad. 17 years. Historically, the ulama spent at least 20 years uh, before they would do fatwas and things like that. Now, every Tom, Dick, and Abdullah is on the Google giving their opinions, and this is what we're in. Now, there's all this confusion. But Arabic is the sine qua non of, of our civilization. It's the Islamic uh, equivalent of mathematics in this civilization. You know, if you want to reach the highest pinnacles of Western civilization, you have to master their uh, mathematics. Because that's, that's what they honor. They honor, they honor quantity. They honor the ability to build bigger bombs, better bombs. Right? So Einstein is the great. When they celebrate intellect, they, they don't celebrate a poet like Robert Frost. 
they celebrate a mathematical genius because they're in the realm of quantity. Our culture is a civilization of quality and language is a qualitative phenomenon. And our prophet loved language. He spoke beautiful language. He was the most eloquent of men. And it's actually a sunnah to speak proper uh, language. It's a sunnah. He, he never, ever made a grammatical mistake, ever. He is the foundation of grammar in the Arabic language. The Quran is the foundation of grammar. And Omar ibn al-Khattab saw a man once, uh, they were shooting and they were missing the target. And he said, he said, why aren't you hitting the targets? Because there was target practice. They said, نَحْنُ مُبْتَدِئِينَ He said, وَاللَّهِ إِنَّ لَحْنَكُمْ أَشَدُّ عَلَيَّ مِنْ خَطَئِكُمْ فِي الْإِصَابَةِ They said, نَحْنُ مُبْتَدِئِينَ نَحْنُ مُبْتَدَى خَبَرْ Right, so it's مَرْفُوعَ مُبْتَدَى مَرْفُوعَ خَبَرْ He should have said, نَحْنُ مُبْتَدِئُونَ Unless it was mansub al ikhtisas, but then you have to have. Uh, uh, so he could have said, "Nahnu al mubtadi'in la nuhsinu al rimaya," something like that. But he said, "Nahnu mubtadi'in." He said, "Your bad grammar is harder than me than your lousy shooting." <laughs> <laughs>